In the 80s, we had the forefront of electronic percussion on these things. Pew, pew. Then in the 90s and the 2000s, and kind of like up to now, we got these things, these cool mesh trampoline type things. But now we have this. totally different kind of triggering surface and technology. Is this the future of electronic drums and drumming? Well, today we're gonna find out here on The Drum Department. Awesome. That, that was, was a near acceptable uh, crossfade into the logo. Today. That wasn't bad, that wasn't <laughs> Pretty bad. Pretty good. These are super cool, and before we get into it, ladies and gentlemen, feel on the drums. Yeah. Come on, come on, where's your applause? I, where's your fanfare? I was, I was, in, I was ex, uh, what do you say, like, uh, um, quiet awe. I was just like, oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, guys. of course, welcome. Thank you so much. You've made your way here all the way from Germany to come hang out with us for a couple of days. Yes. Which is super exciting. If you don't know who Philo is, she's a phenomenal percussionist, drummer. Uh, I guess your, your current main gig that m people might know is, is the Mars Volta. Yes. yes. Uh, so that's a great place to check out what she's been doing if you want to see that. But uh, she's so much more than that. And she's here today to talk all about this really cool new way of producing and making electronic sounds. Uh, you want to give us a little bit of your background, just kind of touch base with maybe how you've experienced and used electronics up to this point? Just something real quick. Well, I think mostly I've just been using drum pads, like, you know, hardware drum pads. Yeah, like these. Like these, basically, mm -hmm. um, because I've been playing a lot with like pop and rap artists, and especially for the rap artists, like the producers are like super particular about their sounds and sure. stuff. So um, I've always been using like the Roland SP, the Axis, and stuff. But you know, for like samples that were there already, that someone made for me, that I just cut up and put on there, um, and they were the way that I've been sent them, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're just re-triggering whatever you've been sent. Yeah. This is a whole new world. This is completely different. And I think that, yeah. before we even talk about what this is and how it does what it does, we should listen to it. Right. So let's get right into a song, yeah? Yeah, okay. let's do it. Let's just hear that. these in action. Okay, so we no have more. a track prepared. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, no, go, keep going. I want to hear what you've been... <laughs> <laughs> we have a track prepared. Uh, this is, uh, we think it's pronounced Bonobo. <laughs> For those of you out there who are a fan of the artist Bonobo, is it Bonobo or Bonobo? I don't know. Um, <laughs> that worked out well. <laughs> this track is called Heaven for the Sinner. We're going to hear what Philo can do with this really cool setup. It's going to take you a whole new place with drumming. Check this out. We don't need no truth
All right. Super cool. Yeah, that's so different. Okay, let's talk about what they are. No, people in the chat are like, what are they? What 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 are these what things? Is it? Yeah, what, what is, is it? That? What's the name of it? Tell us a little bit about it. So, the company that's behind the software and you know opening up this world basically is called Sunhouse and Sensory Percussion. And what we have here is Evans Hybrid. So they teamed up with Evans and they basically just made everything they did before with like the sensors and the software that you get with the sensors a lot better and like just so much more possibilities with it. So what this is, it's essentially it's a machine learning technique. So we have the sensors that are basically piezo pickups mm -hmm. and with the software we can train the sensors to that they know which part of the drum I'm playing basically. So essentially mapping the space. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what like that's the first thing you can do like you can have up to like 10 um, zones on one drum, mm -hmm. right? Um, so com compare that to the uh, Roland pad. Yeah, so for right. example... Because what's different between, what's the difference well, between these two? It's funny you should ask that because in theory they're, they're similar. Uh, that also uses piezo, this is piezo. Okay. Uh, this uses two triggers, that is probably using two as well. It's all in how it takes that same information and uh, learns from it, right? This mm. usually, depending which rolling kit you've got, you have two zones, though some of these have what's called positional sensing. This takes positional sensing to a whole new place. Okay. That's the big difference here for sure. That's one of many big differences here for yeah. sure. Good continue, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's, the, like, that's one of the fun parts is that, that you have like so many different parts of one drum that you can assign in the software, so you can like, you know, like easily speaking, you can have a sample of all of those on all of those zones, right? Mm -hmm. So you can like with one drum, you can basically start playing a gig, so to say, right? You can mm. go out and make music with just one of those sensors on one drum. Right. I think I think the big thing here too is people are probably looking at this going, well, how would I use this? Or does it make drum sounds? And you'll notice today we're running a very I would say untypical setup, atypical setup, no cymbals right. at all. Right. Everything you're hearing is coming off the electronics. The drums are set up with mesh heads. These triggers do work with uh, acoustic heads as well. But uh, yeah. we want to showcase just what this does. And the system itself is the triggers. This module here, I don't know if we can get that in the overhead. Uh, we'll see if we can get that. Or, or that's good too. My finger point right there. This is a little Evans and uh, uh, Sunhouse module, which then of course connects to the computer. The key thing here is that all the really fancy stuff, the math is happening inside right. that laptop. Yeah. I mean, that's also one thing we should mention is that this comes now with this module. Like before you have to had to have like a um, interface, you right. know, to put that in. Now it comes with this module. So, you know, this part is already set when you get everything. And then you have the software, and in the software you can, I think you can see it a little bit. With yeah, we can show the, over, the yeah. over your shoulder, we call it the over shoulder cam. And right. You can see kind of what the, what the software looks like. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it, it, like a lot of new tech stuff, it's pretty smart. Yeah. And it's pretty deep. It can yeah. go pretty deep. It can go pretty deep. But like from the get go, you know, when you start up a new set, like I have a completely blank set right here. All it is is just, it tells you, this is the kick pad, this is the snare pad, this is the right. tom pad, and so on. And then we have those, those um, different controllers and generators. And the thing, you know, the difference about generators and controllers is basically generators generate something, sound or MIDI, yep. and controllers, with controllers you can tell the sound what to do, when, and on which part of the drum, right? Can you give us an example of a couple of those? Oh yeah, for sure. You can even use some of the sounds that you just used if you want. Yeah. Stuff um, we just heard. You okay, Dave? You good? Yeah, I'm just to me it's 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 great because I didn't know a lot about this. So I'm learning just as much as all the people watching right now. Right. Like I'm just absorbing this all. So you're it's pretty cool. You're representing the audience right now. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean I mean the first question I had was no symbols, but it makes sense <laughs> as to why with, yeah. with, with this. And uh, so you need to have a computer obviously to make yes. the sounds. Yeah, you can't just do it. So I'm learning that. Um, and it's similar to the other tech, but the tech or the software behind it is what pulls the sounds and does all the math and yeah. the smart stuff behind it. All right. Exactly. All right. I'm getting it. Yeah. So let me just turn this off. 
So for example, um, I can go in here and um, wait, let me pull up some of my set. Like, let's just pull up some kick drum samples, for example, because I want to have a different kick drum every time I hit the kick drum. Okay, right? sure. Oh, yeah. So I just pull up all of my kick drum samples that I like, and then I tell it, like I can right click it, and then I can um, put them all into a sequencer. Right, so, so you're able to the change The sequencer them. is like one of those modules that you can control the sound with. That's like my favorite module because I just I just like to, to, to just, you know, put a lot of samples in there and then just start playing and have it evolve a rhythm mm. and have it inspire me, you know, because I don't necessarily know which sample is on, right. you know, sequ sequence of part uh, step yeah. seven or something. And right? while, while you're doing that, so, I was going to speak on that too and just say yeah. it becomes a... It doesn't have to be a drum set. Right. This can now become something totally different. Definitely. And the way you approach playing, you know, we, we all use paradiddles and rudiments and all sorts of things. And we can play all cool, kinds of cool drum licks. And we apply them normally to a drum set. Mm -hmm. And so you get what that sounds like. A snare mm -hmm. drum, a tom, a cymbal. But if you apply that same idea to any other sound set or something that reacts differently when you strike it, Holy cow, that's a whole new world. Yeah. Right? Drummers get made fun of all the time for not being able to be com composers or, or come up with great mel right. melodic ideas. Well, guess what? Yeah, you can. this is possible. Because now, for example, I have a marimba sample, sample on, the, on, the, um, on the snare drum. It's three, three different ones, like three different velocities. Mm -hmm. And I have like a bunch of like different... Uh, uh, kick drum samples on the kick drum, um, and I have the sequencer that just like um, um, lets me move through those samples as as I'm moving, you know. As right, I'm, it's like, taking a step at a time. Right, right. So I'm, I can just like load up a bunch of stuff in here. Okay, so load up whatever you want, and when you're ready, I want you just to play something, whatever it inspires you to play. Okay. Yeah, show off this kit. Show off this new. It's called sensory percussion. Yes, if yeah. you want to get, if we were going to go down to brand advertising, I am that shallow, and I will do it. This is, of course, the Evans Hybrid Drumming Product. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a meeting last week, and they said make sure you say Evans Hybrid. So Evans Hybrid. There it is. Dave, have you checked out the Evans Hybrid product yet? I am right now. It's pretty cool. It's super cool. <laughs> it's, it. You're familiar with Evans, right? I'm familiar with Evans. What do you know about Hybrid? Mm. Well, it's right here. It's right in front of. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's just writing all these notes down to talk to you afterwards. All right, Kyle. That's right. That's not what I meant. <laughs> That's at not what all. I meant. <laughs> so, okay, so the way I would set it up, right, mm -hmm. is like I put a lot of samples into like one module and I have it like switch through stuff just so it inspires me, right? Okay, so that took you like 30 seconds. Let's just see right. what you come up with. Okay. Right, so yeah, crazy. It's like yeah. it generates all of that stuff basically on the fly while I'm playing it. And the great thing about it is when I record this, like I can just have endless and endless and endless ideas and sounds, you know, when I start cutting those up, like making beats out of that, it's incredible. And this is like really within a matter of like a few seconds, you know, I just... That's actually a great point. Yeah. So like, yeah, like you might just create something like this and then just jam a little bit. Right. And then like you say, you record yeah. it and be like, you're inspired by maybe one bit. You're like, oh, yeah. I want to cut that up into something else. Yeah. And then that's that's... That's a modern way we create music these days, right? Definitely. So that's super, super cool. Yeah. I want to mention something real quick before we move on to this. We're going to be giving one of these away. Mm -hmm. at the, but we're only going to tell you how we're going to do that at the end of it, so stick around. Um, my next question for you is, do you have drum sounds loaded in there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would like to hear, because... You gotta be you gotta be in that mindset. Let's get yeah. the creative juices flowing. That's very industrial sounding. I want to hear how these react to like an acoustic you know, drum kit. Sound. Dave, I love you. You know that, right? No, I you're hope the guy. So. You're the guy though that we're gonna go to the, like the ice cream store, <laughs> and they're gonna have all these awesome flavors. You're like, you know, 
Have you vanilla? Yeah. Do you have Do you have vanilla? vanilla? <sighs> now, say that. There we go. I could taste that. I, <laughs> I think I think though the important I, I will agree with you here. If you if you if you go to a place that has good ice cream, they should know how to make a pretty good vanilla. Totally. <laughs> the vanilla has to be okay. The, yeah, now I'm going to try those. Let's uh let, riff riff a bit on 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 it with yeah. Like this is just a random acoustic uh, drum kit I just pulled up. Yeah, here. that's kind of more but, of a lo-fi groovy one for sure. I mean, there's a bunch. That it comes with a bunch of like presets with just like acoustic yeah. sets. Yeah. And it reads, it reads yeah, the rim cool. just like that. Too. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. you know, it, mm. it reacts to, to velocity in a way. It opens it up when I hit it harder and stuff like that. Like this is, this is all stuff you can set up with all the sounds you load in, right? You can have it react to velocity and also to timbre and like where you hit it on the on the drum and also to to speed, right? Like you can tell it if I hit it faster than like. You know, close the filter, for example, right. or, or or make. Do you have the an example shorter. of something that's a little bit that has a filter on it that can can we could hear that? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot too yeah, much, <laughs> but I can just in case up. you have something, I can set that up. And, and I want to speak to that while you're while you're playing there. Yeah. I shouldn't say playing, but you are kind of playing. Um, that the reason this is so hip and cool is because it's harnessing the power of a computer, hmm. right? Uh, when we have a a a module for a kit. That's closed technology. That's what's in the box is what's in the box. Yes, you can add samples, and yes, there's effects and all kinds of cool things right. you can do, but you are kind of limited to what it else it can do. Now, there might be a, a couple of updates down the road, and maybe a firmware update that adds a couple more f features and functions. Yep, yep. But having it in your computer, there's obviously infinite more horsepower in a computer than there is in most modules. It allows the software to evolve and grow. You know, uh, where this iteration, I'm sure, six months from now, will be even cooler things that you can have to it. Well, yeah, because she was mentioning that you can change the velocity or the uh, um, um, zones, and I'm like, well, you do that on those pads, so it's just times ten almost. Exactly. Right. More right. zones. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, I love it when the snare drum does that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I have set up a filter for this now so that it, it closes the filter when I when I hit it lower it does close the yeah. filter so let me just make the sample a bit shorter so it's a bit better audible it's like a harp bliss so that's what you can do for example it's like that's a filter oh yeah totally it up. So you can imagine it's like, like going from lo-fi to hi-fi. And there's infinite things you can do with that. Super cool. Yeah. So do you need like your um, degree in info tech to... <laughs> <laughs> like is it pretty simple to actually do? Because I always found, even with my SPDSX, yeah. um, I loved it. I thought it was like it excited me with all the cool things I could do with it. Yeah. But there was always that barrier of just finding the sounds, Putting them on a flash drive, loading it in, going through the endless you know menu buttons just to load, and then I finally get it, my, and then I play it. I'm like, ah, that's that's not really what I wanted. But it was right. so much work to get there. Is right. it pretty? Like, how is the user interface? It's on here? so it's so easy. Like, of course, it can get like you can get super deep and you can get super nerdy about it. But first of all, the user guide of of Sunhouse Sensory is amazing. Like, yeah. that's like. You know, that's like one thing that I noticed when like, you know, getting into like electronic music stuff is like when the, when the interface of the menu is not good, you're just like demotivated from the get go. So this user guide is really, really good and really fun to go good, through. Right. Good. So and um, that's a win. And then the user interface itself, it's like super easy because it's like it's super well structured. The, the things are called, as I said, they're called generators and controllers. So that's like kind of self-explanatory what they do. 
and then you have effects, mm. and okay. then you ha have samples. You can go crazy with the effects and set them up as like sends, for example, you know, that you can like route the sample so mm. it's not affected, but then it is affected, right? So it, it, all of that stuff, and you can go crazy on the sound design, but you can also just load in something onto your snare pad, your kick pad, whatever, and um, throw a bunch of effects in there and just see what happens, right? You can also, what you can also do, what is my favorite part of it basically, um, is to just throw a bunch of effects on the, on the pad you have. And what you can do is you can assign, for example, LFOs to all of the parameters. So you can right click it, LFO, uh, low, low frequency, frequency oscillator. oscillator. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically it's like it's like a sine wave, you know, that like um, um, goes up and down on on a rate um, that you basically uh, assign it to. Right. Which but is that, that's like a like a synthesis choice. That's what we would use in in, in like old school uh, modular synthesis. And right. that sounds a little bit nerdy. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. It, it adds an extra kind of tone to what yeah. you're doing. And what you can do, I don't know if you can see that in that, in that screen here. But Wait, should, should, can you yeah. see that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you can do, this is like a sine wave, so it just goes up and okay, down. Yeah, yeah. But what you can also do is randomize it. It has a function to randomize it. So like, it, you know, it just like, do you see that? It just jumps yep. to burp, burp. a certain uh, rate. Can we hear that? Um, yeah, one sec. <laughs> tricky to that. So. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of cool things that you can do. I'd like to hear it in action. Yeah. If I yeah, and a lot of folks in the chat are like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on here? Is this what's is this drumming? Is this what's happening with this?" And that's the thing with new tech, we get a little bit scared. Yeah, it happens every time. Well, this is something that I don't think we even know what we could do with it yet. No, totally. You know, it's like we're we're gonna put this piece of technology out there, and it'll probably take some time before someone's like, "This is how I'm dialing Absolutely. it." Absolutely. This is how I'm using it, and it was the same with a lot, you know a lot of. I would say a lot of the innovations in drumming. I think the same thing would be said. I, I watched the. Um, I know you guys have seen the movie Blackberry. No. So Blackberry, very famous Canadian company, uh, research in motion. They made the Blackberry phones, and everyone in the business world had those. And then you know they were riding high. They had like forty-five percent of the market because they had the keyboard on the mm -hmm. on the on the mm -hmm. phone, right? Whole keyboard, big deal. And then Apple in two thousand seven announces the iPhone, and Blackberry goes, "There's no way. No one's ever gonna." Go for that, yeah. right? New tech, and you know, it takes time. It takes takes development. Apple took their time with it and well, study what people were doing. And it, it sounds like if I'm if I'm picturing this correct, a lot of people spend a lot of money on a high end electric drum kit, but then they still have to buy their high end acoustic drum sure. kit. Sure, yeah. this right. could could be the two in one. The, the like finally a two in, except for cymbals. <laughs> Except That's for symbols. Yeah, we're, we're, how do you get symbols in it's there? It's gotta be next. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll add, you can answer that one later, Fila, if you don't know the answer. But I want to hear this kit more. I want to hear what we can do with it. So do you got something you're cooking up there on the yeah. old laptop? Give me one sec. So, let me see. Ah, did oh, you hear that? Mm -hmm. So this is basically like what I've been trying to It's something you, you know, just to start, like just to see what this can do, right? Is this is like super easy. It's just I put a bunch of samples onto the onto the thing. I put a bunch of effects onto the thing, and I assign it to a random LFO. So the random LFO just does something. This or right? that or something else. So like to get to know the the software, you can do that stuff. You can also just go into their countless countless presets, right, and just play them. Explore the, the 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 presets as they are because all of those presets they're like also like super well crafted like it's also not just they put a bunch of samples on the on the on the um, snare drum and then that's the snare drum like all of this goes a lot deeper than that oh. you know okay let's do a song I want to hear it in say. action there's a lot of explanation but I'm still I need to be I need to be hooked in <laughs> uh, I need to be like 
yeah, give me that song. Uh, actually, we have one, a Dua Lipa song. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah let's hear what you can do uh, with that Dua Lipa song. You got that ready in there, Chris? Yeah, All perfect. Right. Let's do it. Okay. It's mixed. <laughs> wow. It's mixed in the chat. Mixed in the chat. I see the potential there. I think it's super cool. Um, and uh, yeah, what do you think, Kyle? I was really, I really dig like how the different sounds you can use. They're right at your disposal. You, you only have like four real surfaces here, five. Um, and you're able to grab all those sounds right off of that. Your zone choices, you're able to get a lot happening. And lots of cool samples. I know a lot of folks in the chat are like, you know. Everyone's got an opinion on sound choices, right? And uh, I have in-ears in, and like that, that kick drum is like fat. Yeah. Right. So you may not hear that coming through on a laptop, and you know we, we always get picked on sometimes for for picking pop tunes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fair a, point. But that is the song to demo. Sure. Right? It's got a little bit of industrial yeah. sounds, so you could you could kind of be you know exploratory there. Uh, but the one question I did see come up a couple times in the chat is, I would just use my electric kit. Yeah. What, what do you say to that? Is this something like if you if you're going on a gig where you couldn't use acoustic kits, right. would you choose an electric kit or would you bring something like this? I mean, that really, really depends on, you know, how, how, um, how should I say that, like, so with this, you have the chance to, even though you can bring an acoustic gig, uh, kit to the gig, you can still make the electronic world that you're bringing super unique and super individual, right? So it's not going to be the same 808 kick and snare that everyone else has, That's but right. it's going to be an 808 kick and snare that that moves with however you're playing, right? Mm -hmm. Like that moves with, if you're playing low, 
as I said, like you can have the filter like cutting it off so it's like kind of mumbly and then when you hit it harder, it opens up, right? Like this is all stuff. This You can make this react to your playing and you can uh, individualize this to, a, to an extent that you can with like your regular electronic drum kit, right? Cool. So... So do you think there, what's the learning curve to get that? Because it sounds like the real juice in this is that last 10%. Right. You know, when you spend the time to actually program it and think about how the dynamic may change, not just like from song to song in your set yeah. list, but from bar to bar within the song. Yeah. Right? So is, is what's the learning curve to get to that, to get the, the use out of this, you think? Um, I don't think it's that steep because as I said, like it's coming with a bunch of like great, great, great preset um, sets. So you are gonna have a lot of fun, like right when you open up the software, you know? Yeah. Um, whatever set, whatever preset you load in there, if it's gonna be something tonal, if it's gonna be something, an acoustic drum kit is just gonna be a lot of fun. And the way this is set up, so we have like, we have an edit page, right? Where you can like deep dive into everything, but we also have this play page where it's basically just, um, you know, you have, an overview of every macro that is basically important for the whole kit, right? It's not like, for example, I have macros that, um, a macro that is um, adjusting the reverb of the whole set and um, compression and whatever, distortion. So just with these few macros that are set up in this like preset that comes with the software, I can also already figure out, oh, okay, cool, it has a delay it has a reverb, it has a distortion, um, what happens if I play around with it? And then I go into my effects and I see this list of effects and I see, oh, okay, oh, reverb, I remember that from the beginning of the page, let me see where that is. So I go into the edit and I look for it and I see it, I see the reverb, reverb set up there. And just from, you know, just from this, like just from looking at it, basically, you can already figure out so, so much, so, so much. And as I said, like, you know, we have like, we have resources like Splice, for example, or like freesounds.org. Like there's a bunch of places mm -hmm. where you can just like source samples. Um, and that's like a super fun thing to do to just like load them up in there and um, throw the eff effects on them and just see, see where it takes you. And that's like, that's really already great. Like, you know, if you have good sounding samples, you throw them in there and you throw the effects on there. It's already something else than what you're gonna get with like an electronic drum set with with its built-in effects, right? Because right. you can um, individualize all of that, everything. And um, and those last 10%, as you said, like this is like some super delicate stuff or like super individual stuff mm -hmm. because I'm like, I'm super delicate with my sounds and my sounds. Like I'm like, this is these are like the, I made that, right? Like I'm, yeah. I'm really precious about that. So, right, right. so I, so of course I'm using the software to an extent where I know, okay, like I know all the routing. I know what happens when I, when I do sub mixes and all of that stuff. I know this. Um, but this is just me. That does not mean that this does not work if I don't know that. That right, does not right. mean that at all. At all. It's really just um, what you want to get from this. And I should say, like, if if that's the consideration, like, should I get an electronic drum kit or not? Do I need this or not? Like, um, the incorporation of this with like other DAWs like Ableton and 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 uh, Logic and stuff like that is going to open up a whole new world. Yeah. So um, even if this seems to be overwhelming right now, we're just starting out. Like this is an investment that's gonna pay off. You know? Well, that's why the question that we're answering today is: Is this the future of electric electronic drums? Yeah. Um, and like you said it right on the hit the the nail on the head there it's brand new exactly right so do you see and Kyle I'll ask you this question too do you see this like becoming that next standard is this like triggering and hybrid on steroids is this what we've been always wanting we just haven't had the tech um, what do you think I think we're in that infancy stage with this. For a lot of folks out there that are listening to this that are probably disappointed expecting this to sound like the most expressive drum set they've ever heard in their lives. That's not what this does right now, mm -hmm. but it could, 
right? With the zone sensing ability that this has, you could totally stitch it to do that. That's not the direction they're taking it currently with the software as it's built because they want to showcase what it can do doing other things too, right? Yeah. I did play around with the software. I have, I have a copy of it and I found it really easy to use. I am used to selling things like this to people and I know the biggest learning curve is always software-based things because yeah. people want to be able to plug it in and go. Yeah. They don't want to read a manual. They don't want to listen to a tutorial. They certainly don't want to listen to me talk about it. But yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's when you can just turn it on and play and go, oh, okay. And that's, this does have that. And that's, it does, that is that man. next step. And, and, you know, that's the fun of, the, of doing things like this. It's like, this is cutting edge. You might not dig it yet. Or you might see something down the road where you're like, oh, that's super cool. That might have come from where this is now. Right, so we're just taking that snapshot, and we're going to see what it does. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. like I could go back to the to the to the set I I played like right in the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. when you did the introduction, I just like played it super quickly because this is something that this can also do. Is like it makes you you can uh, have chord progressions on there, so you right. can basically do. Yeah, go back to that. You can show us another demo. Go back to that there. So cool. I was kind of getting in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> you're like your own one man band there, right? Right. Well, and electronic kits, that's not new to electronic setups. That's been something they've put into electronic kits for true. years. Yeah, having true. chain options and having no, no chases. That's way deeper though, because you, you're pulling, I don't know, there's probably 25 sounds in that, maybe more. Right. And so for you to be able to have access to that without coming over here to play with it, and it's just at your disposal. It's like you're just reaching for it, and something's gonna cool is gonna happen, and you're able to respond to it. That's that's what's cool about this. Yeah, and I think for, I think for those who have done that on current electronic drum kits, that have I mean I remember the the Roland drum offs, and everyone had their own sequences in there. So, but I think for those who have done that themselves, they see the value in here, and they see mm -hmm. the potential and the amount of adjustability and personalization you can do with it. Um, for those who don't have never done that, I mean already. They're, that's just an unknown for them, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I know what you. I, I I can see the potential here. What are your What is your thoughts, though, Phil? We already asked Kyle. Is this the future of electronic drums? Um, I do think so, and not just because um, the setup is the setup as it is. Like I think it's super accessible. It's super easy. You can throw those on on any drum kit, as we said. Like mesh head, acoustic head, it does not matter. But it also opens up this huge world of creativity and composition and production for drummers in fields that might be, you know, might seem intimidating to them. Because like, at least for me, like I've always been like hesitant to start producing myself and start writing music myself because I'm not coming from mm -hmm. an harmonic instrument, right? Like I'm having a hard time finding melodies, I'm having a hard time finding um, 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 harmonies and stuff like that. So also with this um, software, right, you can like, find chords, find um, melodies, find just like tonal sounds basically and have them um, like basically what, what's happening in this, in this set, right? It's like it's one sample that is being um, 
uh, uh, quantized to a scale that I tell it to be quantized to, right? So it's always playing the correct notes, basically. So do you and choose the key signature or do you choose just like, and then it just plays through like a, a major or a minor scale? Right, yeah. Do you get to choose all that stuff? Both. You can adjust, you can assign it to a major or minor scale, but you can also like assign it to um, individual scales. Um, okay. Then you can just like, you have a keyboard and then you just like press the, the keys you want it to play, basically. Um, so it always like spits out a melody that's fun and exciting and interesting and that I would not have thought of, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, so this and the, and the effects and the fact that you can assign all of the all of the little parameters of the effects, you know, like everything you can dial in to whatever modulator you want, um, is it just like opens up such a exciting sonical and compositional and creative world, right? Um, that I think will open up the door to production and composition for a lot of drummers that, um, yeah, would maybe not consider themselves producers or anything, cool. you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I do think that that, like, yeah, that will just, like, um, yeah, open up the minds of many, many people that are just, you know, fond of like checking out a software like that, checking out sounds like that, and also the accessibility and just the, 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 the convenience of those triggers being able to be placed on any drum you have. Like, I don't know, that's, those to me are like yeah. huge selling yeah. points. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm curious to hear everyone else's feedback. Leave us a comment below and we'll, we'll talk about what Kyle's going to talk about, mm -hmm. how we're actually going to give away one of these mm -hmm. as well. Now, what do they retail for in the U.S.? So, or like a lot of say? new technology, okay. it's not super cheap. All right. We're talking $1,500. <sighs> yeah, that's going to get you the four triggers, the module, and the software, and all the in interconnection bits that you need. What about the heads? The heads are separate. Heads are separate. Yeah, because you don't need to run mesh heads. Okay. Right, a lot of folks in the chat were asking about that. No, you can run them with whatever heads you have on whatever drum kit. This just allows you to, and, and in this case today, we're trying to just get those sounds. Okay. Right, so. Okay. But yeah, there's, um, we're going give to give away a full set of this. Uh, and I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. Before we do that, though, I think it's time to move on. Okay. We're good to move on? Yeah, let's do okay. it. We're going to get you to play at the end as well. We're going to get you to play a piece at the end. Uh, but uh, it's time to put Philo in the hot seat. That's right. I'm queuing you up for a splash screen. It's time for Blast Beats, everybody. Whoa. Not bad. Philo, have you heard of Blast Beats? I've been... You've been prepped? Yeah, yeah she's been prepped. Yeah. Okay, so okay. if you're watching for the first time, you're listening the first time, what we're going to do is we're going to put Philo to the challenge here. So she gets 60 seconds to answer 20 questions. Okay. If you answer, there's no right or wrong answers, by the way. <laughs> if you answer all 20 questions in 60 seconds, someone out there is going to win a prize. Okay. Our spicy, spicy YouTube chat today, someone's going to win a prize. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So if you're ready, and I'll just ask the audio guys, keep the volume low on our countdown timer because I always forget. It's loud. It's, it can be loud. Yeah. It has like this mysterious music behind it, and uh, it can be distracting, and I don't want to distract you. So, all right, are you ready, Philo, to, yeah. to do this? Yeah. That's right. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Nylon or wood tip? Uh, wood. Wood? Okay. Oh, the clock's not running. She's a broken. There we go. Nylon or wood tip? You said wood. Okay. Favorite place on the planet? Berlin. Oh. Heel up or heel down? Down. Mm. What music are you listening to right now? Um, the countdown thing. <laughs> <laughs> coded or clear drum heads? Uh, coded. Artist you want to work with? Uh, Kendrick. Symbols, clean or dirty? Dirty. Do you prefer golf or tennis? Tennis. Okay. Uh, pedals, do you prefer chain strap or direct drive? Chain. Do you prefer TV or movies? TV. How many snare drums are too many? Five. Yes. <laughs> White wine or red wine? White. Single or double pedal? Single. Flying or driving? Driving. Uh, are concert toms still cool? Yes. <laughs> Do you prefer a dress or a t-shirt? T-shirt. Lacquer or wrapped drums? Lacquer. Steak or seafood? <laughs> seafood. Uh, vinyl or streaming? Vinyl. Oh yeah. Acoustic or electronic drums? Electronic. Oh! And the spice continues. And oh, you got it. Oh, not bad. Yeah, she was great. Seafood over steak? 
<laughs> white wine. Okay, I like it. Concert Tom's still cool. That was fantastic. And that was the best and she answer. She was really, yes. <laughs> that, was, that was the best answer for what are you listening to right now? Yes. The stupid countdown music. In the moment, that's what I'm listening to. <laughs> so good. Well done, so Philo. Good. Thank well you done. for doing that. So let's give away. Let's give it away now. A membership to the YouTube, the spicy YouTube community. Uh-huh. All right, let's do it. Uh, do you want to, Philo, I need a number between one and five. Uh, sorry? Pick a number between one and five. Oh, four. Four. Great four? choice. Okay. okay. One, right. two, three, Got it. four. Who it's going it? to be Eric L. Drumming. Eric L. Drumming. Eric L. Drumming. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have won. What did you say they're going to win? Uh, a year of Drumio. <laughs> Dave got to choose <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah, I get to choose today. Yeah. Year of Drumio. Email K-Rad. I was going to give you something way better. Oh, come on. I'm joking. Uh, yeah, a full year of Drumio. What could be better than that? I know, right? Right. One full year of Drumio mem- membership. Email me at krad at drumio.com. Again, that's congratulations to Eric L. Drumming. Yes. Do you think he's currently drumming? Uh, he might be because he's not responding, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was just there, I swear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. That's just your son, isn't it? It's not. He's getting all the free he gifts. Would, I, he's the last person that gets anything free from me, let me tell you. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> I love my boy, but uh, you got to work for that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, all right, let's get into the segment where we like to showcase a drummer's amazing work. We call this one Groove of the Week. Splash screen now. Good enough. All right, so who's the first? <laughs> This Dave's will, not having this any This will of be it. the last week of Splash Dave's, Green. Dave's not having any of it. Yeah, yeah, twice. <laughs> oh, I tell you. It's become a thing. All right, you know what? I'm just going to throw right to it. Let's see the clip and I'm going to talk about it. All right. find that clip someone sent it to me okay so who is that okay so <clears throat> i want you guys to go if you're on the instagrams you're gonna go find at follow me here it's a bit of a mouthful i always seem to pick difficult ones to spell out yeah yeah so i didn't pick this one though a student picked it so <clears throat> so it's i'm gonna try and pronounce it right jeduthun the musician so it's j-e-d-u-t-h-u-n the musician Jedathun the, the musician. musician. I figure if you type in Jedathun, you're gonna find him. Wow. Right? That's a great but clip. But my favorite thing about that is super clean playing, looks super in, but I love that any singing like look at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's like just in the moment. Gotta love it. So yeah, so go check out Jedathun the musician. He's got a whole bunch of really cool clips up. Uh, killer drummer and uh, clearly having a good time while doing it. And thank you for ever sent us that. I'm yes. gonna be following that guy. Yes. He, he's tight. He's tight. Very, very cool. All right, so that's someone out there in the wild, as you like to say. Does that mean that our students are in captivity? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, (laughs) so now we're going to talk a little bit about our captive community. That's not true. They're all free range. Our members are free range. They're willing to mill about as they wish. All right. And that actually segues to what happens this week with our, time for splash screen, Student of the Week. So speaking of free range students, our students of the week, we got, they keep doing this to me, but this one I, is great. So it's the European, European, it's live, European student Mika. You're right there, Kyle. Good. Take Good. a deep breath. Good. Okay. That's the European student hangout Thanks, meet and greet there that our members put together. <laughs> and it was all student ran, which is great. Yes. They just like, hey, let's go to somebody's house, wasn't it? They, 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 I, I will tell you that I think I can do. I doubt it. Probably okay. right. Give it a shot, though. So, yes, as Dave very eloquently pointed out, yes, uh, they all got together. There was a bit of an accommodation issue. So PDA, one of our students, he's known in the community as PDA, is Paul. Okay. Paul and his family uh, kindly opened up their house. Oh, wow. As drummers do, we support each other. We look after each other. So he made his house available to all the uh, uh, cool meetup students. Super and they just cool. got together. So I have to name off all these awesome students. You're going to see an awesome video in a second. But congratulations to those that went to that meetup. It was Stidger, uh, Kirsten, Sturl, Gaza, Emma, Gavin, 
Pez, of course, Yopi, Chili Glow, and of course, Paul, PDA. They had an awesome weekend. They played some drums, they practiced, they learned, they did all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, let's check out this quick video that they made of the weekend. Check it out. Beautiful. Super cool. I wish we were there, man. Drummers, just, yeah. just the coolest. We just get together and hang out. Is there a lot of hangs out in Berlin, like where drummers just meet up? Kind of, kind of. I feel like it's kind of divided by genres. Oh, yeah. right. So like there's like the metal crew that hang out. Mm. Yeah. And you have to own a double bass pedal to enter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to like bring that. it with you. <laughs> yeah. You knock at the door, it's like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a single pedal knock. That's right. Get out of here. You don't know the knock. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad that there's communities. Like, that's the one thing about the drumming community is that we just find each other. For sure. And then we just like the magnets, you know? And if you wish to find your way to our Drumio community, all you got to do is go to drumio.com slash trial and get a seven free day trial. Do you like how I did that? I did pretty smooth. It's all right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's where you get to check out what we do with our students. We have all kinds of awesome content. There's lessons from all kinds of drummers. There is 5,006, 5,600 now, I think. Yeah, it's Songs in the library. That's full transcriptions with and without drums. Yeah. We have a 30-day drummer. We have so many things. Yeah, we have Jared Falk in there as well. Oh yeah, we were talking about him earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's still a drummer. He's still a drummer, He's that's right. He's still alive and uh, drumming. Gear of the week is probably this gear. Yeah, eh? we're not doing anything else. We're not doing anything mm-hmm. else. This is the we're taught. We the whole episode was this, you know. And again, I've heard rumors of this coming up before it came out. Yeah. And then when they launched it, I've seen a couple of videos here and there. So huge thanks to Dario Evans and um, everyone for helping make this happen. Yes. And Fuel, thanks for coming out all the way yes. from Berlin. Yeah. Now you're doing more with us here. It's not just the drum department episode. You're doing something with Brandon and the Drumio team. We're filming some content with you. Mm-hmm. That's super exciting. Um, I'm sure you'll see some of that for our members. You'll see it for sure. And we'll probably release some stuff on YouTube. Absolutely. And we're shooting it exclusively on the Evans hybrid system. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, before uh, we, we wrap up here, do you normally use these with like a cymbal kit? Or do you, when you practice these, do you take your cymbals out just so you can focus on the pads? Like- yeah, I... I have a I have a little hi hat like two 12 inch um, splash cymbals that oh, I use cool. as the hi hat, and I like this as an addition addition of like an acoustic sound to to this because it's like kind of an uh, unusual uh, hi hat sound. Um, but yeah, I I really solely try to focus on this and also because there's like so much happening in the software that I try to mold the sounds. You know that I would rather find an impact that resembles a symbol and mm. put it on my tom rim mm. then take an acoustic symbol but i mean it's really up to up to your liking you know yeah i guess the sky's the limit yeah, your creative definitely. juices have yep. to be have to be there and it's just going to keep growing too Kyle, how about you tell us about how I one of the lucky... I was just going to do that. Viewers. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So this episode is going to be put up on the site it's going to be archived on the youtube channel on wednesday you will have to sorry, <laughs> I'm good. Are you I swear, all right, Kyle? I swear, I'm fine. <laughs> It'll go up on August 23rd. You'll have until September 20th. All you have to do to get a chance to win one of these full setups with the uh, Evans Hybrid System 
is leave a comment in the video on how you would use this in your drumming. It could be how you compose something. It could be how you might use it live. Mm -hmm. It could be how you might use it as a practice tool. It could be something totally different that you might think is really cool to do with it. So just leave a comment in the video after it's posted on the site, which will be Wednesday. The on our YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel, thank you. Yes. yes. It'll be on the YouTube channel. And post a comment. On September 25th, we will announce on that week's episode of the Drum Department, we'll announce the winner. Yeah, it's going to be random, okay? So don't like, don't, don't worry about that. We're going to just pick anyone who's uh, put something cool in there um, about what they would do with this kit. We're just going to put your names in a hat and we'll draw the lucky winner on the 25th of September yep. 2023. I'll put it in this hat. Oh, man. I, I, I do have to say I am jealous of that hat. My hat? My hat hat? Yes, because you, you always know what it is. It's a hat. Right. Um, Philo, any last things to com or any last comments or things you wanted to mention that we may have not talked about on the setup? Um, I mean, I can just I can just emphasize the, the greatness of it being this endless source of like creative ideas and like sonic ideas and just just that you can like individualize everything to like such great detail, but also just like pull up anything you can get and like have just have fun with it, you know? And also another great thing is that you can load up like multiple sets into like one session. So you can like basically scroll through a bunch of sets while playing a song, or you can like assign, for example, the rim of the, of the snare to have, it, to have it scroll through the set, right? So you can, even that, like you can, if you're into electronic music, for example, you can play a whole set just from like, you know, opening up your computer, opening up the, the software and start playing, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's just something that's like super cool to me. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in awe with that software. Like the only <laughs> thing, the only thing that miss, that, that's missing for me is like the ability to record into it. Like you do need like another dog yeah, yeah. to record into, like to record what you're playing. So that would be like, then you literally do not need anything else because it comes with the interface, right? It comes with the sensors, it, com it comes with the software. So you basically have everything except for something you can record it into. But even that like is, is sorted out pretty quickly, right? Like yeah. there's a bunch of stuff on the market. So yeah, cool. I love it. <laughs> All right. Do you want to get her to play? Do you want to play us out? Unless I'm missing something there, Kyle, but you're kind of like, you're sl slurring over your words there. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're the right guy to ask. <laughs> the people in the chat are like, Kyle needs a vacation. I just came back from you one. You just came back. That's the problem. Ah, I tell um, you. Do you want to play us out with just a, an open jam? Yeah. Or do you want to play us out with a song? We have one more track that we can do as well. It's up to you. No, oh, I'm, I'm fine with jamming. Just Cool. Yeah. We're going to call this piece Kyle Needs a Break. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think, honestly, it's pretty fitting. <laughs> That's uh, so good. I love it. We will it. see you all again next week for another wacky episode <laughs> of the Drum Department. Those of you in the members area, there's a whole bunch of great questions we have to answer. We'll come right back and answer those. I will leave this to Philo to end today. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm -hmm.